Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So good to see everybody. Standing over there looking at that clock going, I'm supposed to wait till it says 32 on it. It sure is awkward. <laughs> So glad to see everybody in the house of the Lord this morning. I wonder if y'all would stand with us as we worship. Good morning. Oh, that was good. Good morning, choir. Oh, that was really weak considering you just finished that awesome song, right? They're out of breath at the, mo at the moment. Hey, everybody good? Wow, right. This is the day the Lord has made. We should what? 
Rejoice and be glad in it. We are so glad that you are here today. Whether you're joining us in person or online this morning, thank you for being here. My name is Pastor Scott. I'm the family pastor here at First Mount Door. We welcome you if you're a guest with us today. Um, in fact, if you're a guest with us, you can really help us out. If you would text the word, oh, we're not ready for the chicken yet. Um, that's coming, it's coming. Just text the word welcome to that number, 352-704-1577. If you would do that, we would know that you're here. We would love to be able to connect with you. If you'd rather not do that, in front of you, in your pew, is a connect card. You can fill that uh, information out on the bottom, drop it at our welcome desk out front. We'll have a gift for you. We'd love to bless you with that. If you'd rather not do that, you can drop it in one of our offering um, containers on the way out, one of our offering boxes. If you'd rather not do that, there's a smart code, a QR code on the back, quick response code. Look at that. We got it covered. And again, smoke signals on Monday mornings if you want to do that. So, however, but we need to know you're here. If you don't do that, we might not know you're here. And one of our pastoral staff would love to reach out with to you this week and tell you thank you for being here and thank you for joining us for worship. We have a few things to bring your attention to. First of all, is that chicken that you saw up there. Go for it. Put that chicken back up there. So, yes, Chick-fil-A, eat your heart out, right? This is our trunk or treat coming soon. It's the theme this year is Barnyard Blast. If you uh, had a car in trunk or treat last year, then you already got a text this week. You got first dibs on a spot. But, uh, and so but we, you, if you didn't, you'll be getting a text this week and look on our website and Facebook as well. We'd love for you to be a car host. You'll learn what that means if you go to uh, that website when you get the link or you see it, right, what that is. There it is, there's the car, isn't that fun? Come on, I worked hard on that. Tell me that's fun. All right. So anyhow, car host, sign up today. So the theme this year is a barnyard blast. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Think Hee Haw, okay? All right? Think Hee Haw in Mount Dora, and you'll get it right. So it's going to be a whole lot of fun. We want you to participate in that. Uh, it, last year, over 1,000 people came through for our trunk or treat. We're expecting that many or more. Uh, and you might be wondering, with the chicken and the cow, are you saying something? Yes, Chick-fil-A will be with us, and the Chick-fil-A cow will be there this year, too. So uh, a lot of fun. We're pulling in all the favors. Anyhow, we want you to be a part of that. We're so glad that you can be a part of that as we reach our community. A couple really important announcements, to things that are coming up even sooner than that, and that is ladies. The Gifted by Grace Ladies Retreat, you can... You can uh, uh, pay and sign up today for that. When you do sign up, you do need to pay for that. It is a retreat, but there, thank you for putting that up there. It is, you're not going anywhere but here, which is really nice. So there's not the added expense of traveling somewhere, but it's a beautiful retreat. More information again online about it, but you can sign up today and pay right out front, okay? Then, uh, last but not least in our announcements today, uh, you do want to us ladies sign up today for gifted by grace and get and pay for that if you can our um christmas choir kickoff i think we have a slide for that uh christmas choir kickoff party if you want to be part of this awesome choir look at these beautiful people <laughs> thank you for the rim shot there sir uh if you want to be a part of a fun group uh check it out right um it's a whole lot of fun you can join us for the christmas choir kickoff party and then a final uh, deadline for the Ultimate Smoky Mountain Christmas. I think we have a slide for that as well. The Ultimate Smoky Mountain Christmas. That deadline is coming up very quickly, the 17th. There it is right there. Uh, the deadline to pay is to, uh, September 17th. The event is the 12th to the 16th. More information online about that. It's a whole lot of fun. If you haven't if you don't know what it is, it's a trip to Pigeon Forge and uh, music and uh, concerts, uh, Bible devotionals every day, food. That usually gets an amen, never mind. Uh, all sorts of wonderful stuff, all inclusive, a whole lot of fun, so you can learn more about that. Thank you for being with us today. Would you stand up, please? Would you turn to somebody you don't know and say, I'm so glad to see you in church? So glad to see you in church this morning.
to be in the house of the Lord and turn our attention to him and to be so thankful for the goodness that he puts in our lives. Amen. From the moment that I wake up 
Thank you, thank you. Y'all, y'all, y'all can go ahead and be seated. Um, anybody glad to be here today? Come on, there is nothing like meeting that first Mount Dora on a Sunday morning to be able to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I wanted to say thank y'all so much for joining us this morning. If y'all don't know who my name, uh, who I am, my name is, there we go. Uh, my name is Colton Fricks, and I have the privilege to be able to be the youth pastor here at First Mount Dora. And we want to say thank y'all so much for joining us. This is going to be a time where we go into a time of uh, offering and tithes and offering. So I'm going to go ahead and welcome our ushers to go ahead and come 
and for. We always want to say thank y'all so, so, so much for your investment into what God is doing here at First Mount Dora. Uh, things like trunk or treat and uh, things like uh, uh, back to school bashes and so uh, many more things uh, do not go on without every single one of y'all. And so we want to say thank y'all. Uh, we also want to remind you that there's always going to be three ways to give um, each and every week. There's also drop boxes as you leave. And so we just want to say thank you, but let's bless the offering today. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much just for uh, your, your overwhelming presence in this room every single week, Father. It seems like you are moving and you are so active, um, Lord, whether that's through worship, whether that's through the message, whether that's through um, just spending time with your people. Father, we're so grateful to be able to have a godly community that we can come and be a part of every single week. And so, Lord, I just want to ask that you would just bless this offering today. God, I'm thankful for a church that invests and wants to be a part of what is going on here at First Mount Dora. And Lord, we just want to thank you for the generosity of this church, Lord, and we want to thank you for the offering that is going to be given today, God, and we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Before we get started, everybody, I just want to say something, right? Yes, right. How many of us love pastor, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> so I don't know about you guys, um, I've been here for four years now, and and here we go, right? This is what happens. <clears throat> All right, let me try and pull this together. Um, been here for four years. And when I got here... I know, I can, right? I can, I can. Um, I was in a rough place. I really was. And this church has been a huge, huge blessing to me. My family and my, my, my whole life has had such a big change. And I don't want to put you on a spot or anything, um, but he has been such a huge part of that. And I'm just so... <laughs> I'm just so thankful to have this church and this family and this pastor and his wife and his family. And today, we get to see something that we don't get to see very often, right? So we were talking about this earlier, and I asked Pastor, I said, should I say that nothing like this has ever <laughs> happened before? And there seems to be a small bit of debate about it, but I'm gonna go with it simply because I like the line. <laughs> so Pastor and his wife are going to sing for us this morning, and Pastor, is gonna preach after, right? So we're keeping him very busy today. So pray for him, put your hand upon him. I'm so thankful for his spirit. I'm so thankful, he, he even said it himself this morning, I have to steal his words, for a servant's spirit. And the theme of humbleness that's been in our Bible lessons recently. And I just hope you guys get a huge blessing out of this.
for that for a long time, y'all. <laughs> oh, I wonder if you would just bow your heads with me for just a minute. <clears throat> oh, Heavenly Father, we are forever indebted. We are so thankful for all that you have bestowed upon us and planned for us and the steps that you have ordered for us that we cannot see but we're just so thankful, God, that you have loved us enough, that you cared about us enough to give us your son, Lord, who shed his blood to make all of this possible for us, Lord. And we just thank you so much. Lord, we take awe in your wonder. We take awe in your power. And most of all, Lord, we take awe in your example of love. Lord, bless the rest of this service as we move forward. Lord, I pray that you would touch Pastor as he brings the word to us. Lord, let him hide behind your word this morning. Lord, let our ears be opened to hear the words that you have for us. To communicate with us on an individual level this morning, God. We pray that you would bring your will and your way and your word into our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much. And thank you for your kind words. Uh, well, if you're a guest with us, you may think that I do that often. I actually, I believe I went about 10 years before I ever sang uh, here at the church. I, and so, so it completely scares me to death. And so I'm literally been a nervous wreck all morning. Uh, and so it, it scares me now more, much more than preaching. I've literally been sick this morning because I've been so nervous. And so many of you may think, oh, you don't get nervous anymore. Oh, I wish that were true. I have discovered that people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s still get nervous about a lot of different things. So, well, uh, it, it is hard to believe I didn't sing for that length of time. And uh, Sherry and I sang that for the first time in 2019. And so, um, but we had a revival going on. So I think this may, she says I've done it one other time where I've sung and then preached. And so, it, it, so this is twice in 16 years. So it doesn't occur very often. That percentage wise, I don't know what that is, but it would be very small in, in all of these years. Well, what a wonderful week. Welcome home, everyone. I'm so glad to see you. It has been an amazing week here at First Mount Dora. You know, every week there's things that are going on here. And many of you may not be aware of it. This week, we hosted the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. That is a, a, a parachurch, parachurch ministry. That's a very, very positive ministry. All 67 counties of Florida, all their leaders were here this week on Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, so well over 100 people. Um, and I began with uh, a time of prayer with them on Tuesday morning. Aaron led worship for them on Tuesday morning and on Wednesday. And John Hall cooked breakfast for them on Wednesday morning. And so it was uh, a busy week. And that doesn't include us feeding our football team uh, that we do here on Thursdays and Fridays and uh, what we had in ministry. Now, two weeks ago, we had our back-to-school bashes, and we had over 400 on campus, and then we had a hurricane week. And so we didn't know what would happen this last Sunday. I'm so proud, or last Wednesday. This week, on Wednesday night, we had 75 in our youth program with Colton and Abby. And uh, if, if you're not aware, we flipped the whole campus on its head. 
And so now the youth have a gym area and a worship area. They're meeting in the family ministry center with his 13 leaders. He had a total of 88, and eight of those students had never, ever been to our youth worship before. So that's, that's huge to have eight new kids. It was also a great night for our children's ministry. We had had over 200 the week before, and Scott had no idea with us having a week off with the hurricane what would happen. We had 62 children and 17 workers, and, and so that is absolutely incredible in the children's ministry. They now meet in the youth building. So they're meeting there in a more... Some of you who've worked with children, you can appreciate this. It is a much smaller and more confined space. So if you've never worked with children, you may not understand that statement, but it is, it is a much safer environment with, for Scott, and he's very glad to be in the youth building. And then... Uh, on top of all that, we have had six new choir members in the last three weeks that have joined our choir. So Aaron's ministry is growing as well. I'm so proud of all of these guys, so proud of how the Lord is using Colton and Abby and Aaron and Scott. It's just absolutely wonderful to see all that God is doing. Well, uh, I can't believe this, but today, you know, as a pastor, it's, it's almost hard to figure out when is your anniversary, and so what I mean by that is the church votes on you at one time. And you could say that's your anniversary. And that's July. Every July is my anniversary. But then there's another anniversary, and this is what most of you would categorize your anniversary, is when you were put on payroll. That's what you would think. Because then you would say, well, that's when I started was when I was put on payroll. And, and then for pastors, there's another one. There's the Sunday that you begin preaching where you're preaching week after week after week. And for me, that was 16 years ago yesterday, September the 9th. So uh, here we are at the beginning of our 17th year. I cannot believe it. I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, and you wonder sometimes, where did the time go? To give you a, cue, uh, a kind of a clue of national averages, for Baptist just Baptist, the average tenure of a pastor prior to COVID had dropped to 18 months. Just before COVID, it went up to 21 months. Then with COVID, all denominations, this is Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Assembly of God, all of them, a thousand pastors per month started resigning. The average age of the resignations were 40 to 55. That age group was the ones that were bailing because it was too hard and they didn't know what life was going to hold for the church. And so there's a great deficit of pastors nationwide. And, uh, and so here we are all of these years later. And I just want you to know, you mean... <laughs> more to Sherry and myself, Ellie, Ethan, and Evan, than you could ever, ever realize or imagine. Uh, you don't know. You don't know how we value you, how many through the years we have prayed for you. I go through the church roles and pray for our people. Some of you I have known for over 16 years now. Frank McClenney was on the pastoral search committee. He was chair of it, so if any of you don't like me, blame him. <laughs> He's 90 years old, and he'll put you in, his, in your place. He'll just tell you. He doesn't have to hold back anymore. He can say what he thinks. So he was chair of that committee. I've always loved him and appreciated him. He was the first conversation I had was with Brother Frank McClenney, still sitting back there today, and... So very grateful for him and his leadership in that time. And uh, it is truly an honor to serve you. It, it is one of those, uh, I think about it, I rejoice with you. When you get a different job or a pay raise or whatever, I rejoice with you. When you're going through things and you're in the hospital or something like that, I weep with you. Miss Dottie, it's so good to see you back in services after your major surgery. Uh, it, it's always one of those things where I am just so very thankful for you. 
before we had ever been to Mount Dora, while we were on the plain here, before I'd ever seen this beautiful sanctuary, before I had ever learned that we were almost three million in debt at that time, if you want to know exact numbers, 2,889,000. You do the math on that, that's just a little $11,000 and it would be three million. So uh, that's what our debt load was at that time. Before I had ever seen our incredible family ministry center, even before I'd ever met Frank McClinney, on the plane ride here, the Lord called me. And this morning, <laughs> I've never shared the passage publicly. I want to share with you that calling on my anniversary as such and read to you what I was reading on the plane and when God spoke to my heart and it's why we've stood the test of time, we've weathered the storms, we've been with you in good times and bad, debt loads and debt free. It's because of the call of God. I want you to know when God calls you, you cannot get away from that call. You cannot get away from it. You are rooted and planted when he calls you until he moves you. And you can't get away from it. So when God speaks to you and says, this is it, you have to listen. You have to listen. So turn, if you would, to Psalm 107. And I'm going to read to you the passage where God spoke to my heart. Let's all stand in honor of God's word. Psalm 107. We'll begin in verse 1. Psalm 107. Of course it had to be that. Of course it did. For those of you who don't know, there's a story there too. Yesterday, Sherry told me, uh, we were, we're in a group that's boarding here in just a few minutes, and she said, by the way, we're in group 77. And I looked at her and I said, of course. Then she just threw up her hands and started laughing. So hear the word of the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who's the redeemed? The church, you are. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. He gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. Verse 7, key verse. And he led them forth by the right way. Your translation may say straight way that they may go to a city for a dwelling place, or that they may go to a city and settle there. Key verse. Verse 8, Oh, that men, second time, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. You begin to see that theme. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. You ever been there? And he saved them out of their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains to pieces. I love that. That can be all of you today. Same theme, verse 15. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. You see the theme? And for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. And they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. You ever been there? And he saved them out of their distresses. And he sent his word and healed them. What heals us? the word of God, the word of God, and delivered them from their destructions. Here's the theme, verse 21. 
all that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. And he commands and raises the stormy wind which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens and they go down again to the depths. I'm getting on a boat. That's kind of scary. <laughs> Their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like drunken men. You can pray that that's not us. And are at their wit's end. And they cry out to the Lord in their trouble. You ever been there? And he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven. Here's the theme. All that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them also exalt him in the assembly of the people, that's us, and praise him in the company of the elders. May God's word not come back void. You may be seated. Oh, church, what an incredible, incredible psalm. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's how it begins in, in the very beginning there. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so in verse 2. God has done so much for you. He's done so much for you. And we need to take time to thank God for all that he has done for us. What has God done for you? Have you ever thought about it? What has he done for you? Has he saved you? Has he cleansed you? Has he forgiven you? Has he redeemed you? Are you gifted? Do you have a spiritual gift? Uh, listen, God has done so much for the redeemed. Has he freed you? Has he broken your chains? Has he forgiven in every way and cast your sins as far as the east is from the west so that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus? Does he promise to work all things together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose? Even the bad things, he promises to do that? Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Right where you are, would you just bow your head and you begin to thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for at least three specific things in your life. Thank the Lord. Would you thank him for his church right here, First Mount Dora? If you're saved, would you thank him for your salvation? If you have a home, would you thank him that you have a place to live? The people in Morocco don't have a place to live. The people in Turkey from the earthquake, they don't have a place to live there. Or Syria. If you have a bed to sleep in, thank the Lord for your bed. Thank the Lord that you have soft pillows and clean sheets. If you have food in the refrigerator, thank the Lord for food. Thank the Lord for a refrigerator. Oh, Lord, help us to always be thankful. Would you begin to think th thank the Lord for the little things that you can walk, that you can see, that you can hear, that you can taste, that you can smell, that you can feel? They're not little if you can't do them. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful gifts that you have given to the children of men. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, God is better to us than we deserve. He really is. He's better to us than we deserve. Thankfulness should be something that's constantly on the lips of those who are redeemed. We should be grateful people. I'm so grateful that God has enlarged the family of God over these last 16 years. I'm so grateful for how we've been able to minister in this community. Do you know this week one of the principals, there was a teacher that her home burned. She lost everything. Didn't literally did not have a pair of shoes. Do you know the first call the principal made? First Baptist Mount Dora. She called me during the FCA event. I took her call, 
and church because we, we have a lot of ways we give. Y'all know that. But in, within our giving, we give really to four different things. Buildings, budgets, benevolence, and missions. That's really what we give to when you begin to think about it. Y'all have been so generous in giving in benevolence. I was able to go and we bought a $1,000 gift card at Walmart. Three ladies lived in the home. They had no shoes, no undergarments, no jeans, no shirts. They lost everything. $1,000 won't go far, but it'll get them, it'll get them started. And so, so we were able to do that because you give to benevolence. Then I went to the hotel. Red Cross only paid for three days. The, you can't figure out anything in three days. The insurance adjuster hadn't even been to the house yet. So we paid for an additional five days. And then I had another church, not even a Baptist church, that I was having lunch with the pastor. And I said, I've got to go. I'm meeting a principal because she's taking me to a teacher who just lost her home. And he said, really? He said, we have, we have a missions fund, and it hadn't hardly even been touched this year. He said, we'll pay on that hotel for that family as well. I wasn't asking him. It, it was just one of those things. I said, I got to go, and told him why I had to go. And they paid for an additional five days to seven days. I hadn't found out how long exactly, but five to seven days. So church, look, when you give, it makes a difference, and we can be thankful because they lost Everything You think, what would you do if you didn't have shoes to go to work in tomorrow? That was the pr- She had to call the principal because she couldn't go to work because she didn't have shoes or clothes to put on. The principal's like, she wasn't even complaining. She didn't even tell the principal what had happened. But she's like, what do you mean you don't have clothes? And that's how it all started. Oh, church, we have so much to be grateful for. I'm so grateful that we touch the world from Mount Doral. We don't just help right here locally. We touch the world. In three weeks, church, Sherry and I are going to embark on one of the most exciting and adventurous and long (laughs) trips that we have ever known. Because of you and your ministry, Because we've always supported Florida Baptist Children's Homes, which has now changed the name to One More Child, and you know we're the second largest provider for children's services in the entire state of Florida, behind only Catholic charities as Florida Baptist through One More Child. We also are now in 16 countries where we're taking care of orphans in other countries. So Sherry and I were invited because she serves on the board of One More Child, and in three weeks, we're going to South Africa for 12 days. As Florida Baptist, we support two orphanages in South Africa. They are on opposite ends of the country, and I did not know that until Thursday. (laughs) And so that means once we get to South Africa and we go to one orphanage, then we have to fly across the country within South Africa to a second orphanage and they're trying to prepare us emotionally. And I will tell you, I know our kids that we, that because of our giving, I know that the kids will be fed and clothed. But I will tell you, I have a feeling that I'm gonna wanna bring a child back. I just, I I know it's going to steal my heart. I've actually never done, oh, I've never been on the continent of Africa. So I've certainly never done orphanages in Africa. The level of poverty that we're going to see, do you understand poverty in America is like here and poverty other places in the world, it's different. It's gonna be a whole different level of poverty that I will not, nor Sherry, will have ever experienced. But it is because of your ministry and literally we're an extension of you that we're going to be able to truly touch the world. We're gonna be seeing some things, doing some things that we've never even imagined. The entire message of Psalm 107 conveys what God has done for his children and how he has lovingly dealt with them. God withholds what is deserved. What do we all deserve? We deserve punishment. We deserve discipline, punishment, hell. That's what we deserve. 
He withholds all of that, and what does God give? He gives us what is not deserved, grace and mercy. Did you know Psalm 107 has been influential literally throughout all the centuries? Going back to the Presbyterian beginnings of the Scottish Presbyterian revival with John Knox in 1544. And many of you remember later on that wonderful old hymn that was written, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. It's because of this passage. Psalm 107. See, it speaks to four different types of people in Psalm 107. And I want to briefly walk you through those four different types because I know I've been every one, and you have too. I know theologically the Psalm is really speaking about the exiles of Israel. I I know that. But I also realize how it speaks to us when we are lost, and I believe it speaks to us when we are also found, when we are saved. So here are the four types of people I want to give them to you this morning. Verses 4 through 9, and you will see it very clearly in the psalm. In verse 4, 4 through 9, the first type of person is the wanderer. The wanderer. You see it right there in verse 4. In verses 10 through 16, you can tell immediately if you're bound in affliction and irons, what are you if you're bound in irons? You're in prison. You're in prison. So it speaks to the prisoners. And then, verse 17 through 20. Verse 17 through 20, it says they drew near to the gates of death. It says that they abhorred all manner of food. What is that? That's when you're sick. You're sick. You're ill. And so it deals with the sick in verses 17 through 20. And then the last part, verses 23 through 30, that deals, you see very easily, those who go down to the ships. It's the storm-tossed. Everybody can be storm-tossed in life. And so I want to look at those four different types real quick. The wanderers. Besides the children of Israel in the desert, remember they wander in the desert for 40 years. You think about this. This could be you. Have you ever been in a desert of loneliness? Anybody ever know what it's like to be lonely? Did you know you can be lonely in a group of people? Did you know that's possible? Funniest story that ever happened when I was working with Billy Graham. True story. Rose Bowl in Los Angeles. In the top five seating arenas in the entire United States, okay? Capacity, built, by the way, built in 1926. Capacity, they say 95,000. We had 104,000. True story. I'm up in the booths at the very top of the Rose Bowl. And there's a lady down on the field <laughs> with a radio. And she keeps calling, and she keeps calling, and she keeps calling over and over. And she, it was driving me insane. It really was. I'm up there in the translator's booths. We are translating live in a few moments to 32 different languages and over 300 million people. I'm kind of busy, okay? I've got a job here. And this lady, Jan, is down on the field calling me over and over and over. And I finally answer. And I said, what do you need, Jan? And she said, I'm down on the field and I'm all alone. It just flew all over me. I forgot it was an open channel. And I said, Jan, you're with 80,000 people. You're not alone. And I said it just like that, rather harsh, rather harsh. I, I was, remember, I'm like 32, 33, so I typically could be a little more harsh than I am now. For the rest of the crusade, people would see me and they would go, you're not alone. 
you're not alone. Wherever I went, I'd walk into a room and they'd go, you're not alone. It's like, well, that is God's word to us. When we're wanderers, we can feel lonely. But I want you to know, you're never alone. Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You are not alone when you have the Lord Jesus. He is always beside you. And listen, it's not just that. You can feel the routine uh, of just life and feel like you're a wanderer where every day is the same. You're going to the same job. You're sitting at the same desk and you just feel like life is futile. I want you to know when that's your life, don't think of it like that. Remember, you are not alone. You're not a wanderer. Others, they struggle with affluence because it never satisfies and there's never enough. Never enough. And I want you to know, God, he wants you to know he loves you and you are not alone and that he will help you with your search of help and hope. All of us need it. Oh, Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So when we're wanderers, know this, Jesus is always our way. He's always the way. Do you know why I begin every service with welcome home? It's because when we were flying here on July the 1st, 2007, I underlined it in my Bible. On July the 1st, Sherry and I were seated separately. It's one of the few times it was a full flight, and I was at the back of the plane, and she was toward the front. If I remember correctly, 13 rows between us. And so I'm reading, and I'm reading Psalm 107, and I came to this verse. And he led them forth by a straight way, my translation said at the time, that they may go to a city for a dwelling place, that they may go to a city to settle there. And I stopped, I underlined the verse, and I said, Lord, are we going to Mount Dora? And in my heart, not audibly, but in my heart, I felt the Lord say, yes, you're going to Mount Dora. I had interviewed with over 40 churches. I had flown to other places. And yet, God had never spoken so clearly as he spoke when I was on my way here. And so I walked up those 13 rows, and I put my Bible in Sherry's lap. And I said, baby, look what this has to say. And she read it, and she did what she normally does. She said, so what? Why <laughs> I, said, I said, well, darling, I think God's going to call us to Mount Dora. And she said, well, you just get back to me when we know. And I said, he's calling us to Mount Dora, darling. It, right? It, he's leading us to a city where we may settle. This is where we're going to settle. And she said, you really think so? I said, I do. She said, you hadn't even talked to him face to face. We don't know anything. And I said, I'm telling you, this is where we're going to end up being. So it was one of those moments where I realized that God was letting us know this was home. It was home. So I want to ask you, do you have a church home? We had wandered all over the country serving the Lord, literally from Los Angeles to New York and several places in between. Have you got a home? You need to be settled. All of us need to be settled. You need to make a conscious decision to bloom where you're planted. Just bloom where you're planted. So many people are planted someplace and they don't end up blooming there. They just stay a green plant forever like these right here. No, you, you bloom where you're planted. And if God has you here, you go ahead and join this wonderful church family at the invitation. Then in verses 10 through 16, we read these words. In verses 10 through 16, those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. I want you to know, you may be a prisoner condemned to hopelessness, and all of us feel trapped at times. There's not a person in here that hadn't felt trapped at, at some point in their life. You ever felt trapped in a job? Some of you have been trapped in your own families. <laughs> 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 
Not that I'm looking for counseling appointments, you understand, but (laughs) it's usually, I will say this, many times you are trapped in your extended family. You cannot help who you're related to or who they marry. You, you, you are. You're just kind of trapped. You're in it. And, and so all of us can feel like a dungeon at times in life. Sometimes it's our own moral failings that make us feel that way. Have you ever felt like that from something you did, something you slipped up and did, and you feel like you're so trapped where you are just, you feel like you're worthless, no good. It can be anything. I've had people who literally get drunk and they feel like that one time after getting drunk. I've had people who who look at pornography and and they feel like they're worthless and no good. They feel like they're in chains. You, You know, it can be anything. I've had people tell me they've done that when they overeat. They feel like eating. Listen, your dungeon can be made out of a lot of different things. And there's plenty of temptation in here for all of us of all different kinds. What you're tempted by may not be what the person on your pew is tempted by, but everybody has temptation. It's common to all people. And by the way, our senior adults have assured me you don't grow out of it. I used to think as a, that, you know, all of a sudden, Richard, you hit that magic number of 70, temptation is out the window, and you're never tempted by anything. Y'all have so disappointed me. <laughs> You've let me know, you let me know that's, that's never the case. I wish it was the case. Now, I would like, and here's what people have told me, the temptations do change. Through the decades, the temptations change. But we're still all in that war, in that fight, where we can feel like a prisoner by our own evil doings. See, here's the truth. All of us choose to do wrong at different points in our life. How do I know that? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody in this room, me included, has chosen to do wrong things at different points in our life. And if you say you disagree with that, I'm sorry, but that's what the Word says. I'm not making this up. Everybody chooses to do wrong things at different times in our life. And that can lead to what I would call a prison, a prison of our own making. Many times our ability to choose can even be taken away by our own actions. But I want you to know today, in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is hope. There is hope and there is deliverance from bondage of all kinds. So here's the question. Have you ever cried out to the Lord for deliverance? Have you ever cried out to the Lord for deliverance? And just ask the Lord, would you deliver me? Would you deliver me? You know what? We need to pray that. Well, here's what I've discovered. If I just keep preaching, everybody walks out and does nothing with the word. We don't do anything. We don't ever act on it. So right now, right where you are, if you're willing to pray this brave prayer, would you ask the Lord to deliver you from any bondage or prison that you are in? Just say, Lord, I call upon you, the great deliverer. Deliver me from any bondage or prison that I'm in. It may be financial. You just ask the Lord. Say, Lord, deliver me from any bondage that I'm in. Give me freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want you to know, if you mean it from your heart to God's heart, it has to go from your heart to God's heart, I want you to know he will hear you and he will help you. He will help you. He is our help. I love Romans 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. See, when you're in prison, what happens? You feel condemned all the time. When you're in a prison, you feel that that you are condemned. There's no hope. And I want you to know, in Christ Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Oh, then you move to verses 17 through 20, and it's the sick. The sick. These are people who, because of their own sins, fell into sickness and were close to death. But I want you to know in Luke 5, 31, Jesus is the great physician. He's the great physician, and he can heal all sickness. Have you ever been sin sick? Just sin sick. 
where sin makes you sick. By the way, it can also be somebody else's sin that makes you sick. You need to know that. Somebody else can sin against you and it can make you physically sick. It can make you ill. Oh, it's, it's, it's just a, tr- a true fact of life. But I want you to know he does heal. Jesus can bring relief to your suffering. Have you ever asked the Lord to bring relief to your suffering? Why don't you do that right now? Right where you are, just close your eyes and say, Lord, would you bring me relief from my suffering? Bring me relief from my sin sickness. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I want you to know those are brave prayers. The last part you see in verses 23 through 30. This is the storm-tossed person. The storm-tossed. There's all these big, y'all, we're we're leaving immediately after this service. I can't tell all of you by. We're leaving to go do our 20th anniversary cruise from three years ago. This is our third attempt to board the cruise ship. (laughs) Sherry's holding her breath. So we bought the cruise the end of 2019, 2020. So when everything shut down in 2020, I thought, oh, this will just be a few weeks. (laughs) Had no idea. So it was canceled, of course. And unlike most people, I didn't get the refund because I thought it'll just be a few weeks. So I have paid and I have paid and I have paid. And I told her, we got to get rid of this because it's costing me a fortune. So we're finally going to try to take the cruise. And you see what it says right here. It says in these verses that they are basically sick because of their going up and down all the time. Oh my goodness, with Hurricane Lee and whatever this other hurricane is that's out there, we're headed to the dock and they sent us an email already and it says, we don't know where you're going. We don't know what your cruise route will be at this time. You will be informed upon arrival Honduras is a possible destination. I'm like, I, I don't even know what to do with that. So we're going to a boat that we don't know where it's going. And we don't know if we're going to get it on it. But we're going we're gonna to try. Third time, we'll just see. I don't know. You can pray for us. But I want you to know, if you look at this passage about the, 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 the waves, his wonders in the deep. He commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens. I don't want to be on that wave. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I, I'm fine not ever seeing that. I want you to know, when we think about this, this storm, here's what this represents. In my life and in yours, it represents, it encompasses the unexpected, difficult, severe things that happen in life. The unexpected wreck where you're in the hospital. The unexpected diagnosis when you hear the word cancer. That unexpected sentence when your spouse comes in and says, I don't love you anymore. It encompasses the severe the unexpected, the horrible. Through our time of living life with you, there have been many of those in your life and in ours. When we lost a baby, completely severe, unexpected, painful, very painful. When we lost Sherry's mom, but I can go around the room and I can remember all the services I've been in with you on the people that you've lost. I I think about uh, Mr. Bill and and Bruce right there. I've done both of their wives, both of their wives' services. And so many of you have gone through incredibly painful things. When I think of this, I want you to know deep waters are often where the Lord does his business. You hear me? Deep waters are where we grow. It it goes back to that old phrase, when you squeeze a lemon, you find out what you're made out of. And some people are just bitter, and some people it produces lemonade. And you know what the difference is when you get squeezed? The difference is this, a bent eye. Bitter and better. Two, Two words, 
If you're going to be better, the only difference is a bent eye. Are you willing to be bent when you go through those severe, unexpected, horrible times? And are you willing to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding? In all your ways, acknowledge Him and let Him direct your path. Let Him make your path straight. Oh, it's so important to trust the Lord in those hard times. I think of Jonah and Job. I think of Joseph in slavery and prison. And then I think of Jesus on the cross. All of those as they went through the severe storms. And it was in the storm that Jesus paid your ultimate price. It was in the storm of the cross that Jesus shed his precious blood that we could be forgiven of all sin, that we could be cleansed and made right. It was on the cross, the greatest difficulty, the greatest challenge that Jesus would know. It was there that your debt was paid, that your freedom was bought. It was on the cross where Jesus died for you so that he can cleanse every sin by the blood of the Lamb. See, God doesn't always cause all the storms of life, but I want you to know he can use them. In Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So have you ever given your storms to the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you ever trusted him in the midst of a raging storm? I want you to know it's so important to be able to do that, to trust the Lord in the midst of a raging storm. Some of you today, you need to come, whether you're a wanderer or whether you're just plain old sick, whether you're a prisoner or whether you're in a storm of life, you need the Prince of Peace, the great physician, the way, the truth, and the life. Today, come and let Jesus rescue you. Some of you today need to come and ask Jesus to be your Savior. Others of you, you need to rededicate your heart to the Lord. You've wandered far away from the Lord Jesus, and you know it, and it's time to come home. Still others of you need to follow through with believer's baptism, and others of you need a church home. It's time to not wander anymore. Let's all stand. Lord, we pray in this moment that you would touch all of us, Lord, so that we can endure the storms of life, so that we know that you're the Prince of Peace, the great physician. You can take care of us through all the trials and all the problems. So, Lord, you help us in this moment to step out by faith and to trust you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You come. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Yesterday, y'all know we've always been very active with Operation Christmas Child, the shoeboxes, and we've been a drop-off location for 
probably 12 years. Yesterday, we had 115 people here yesterday getting ready for Operation Christmas Child. So all those shoeboxes, simple little mission project that we've always taken our kids to Dollar Tree or whatever, and they are the ones who fill the shoeboxes. They, they get a part of that. So it's a great way to involve a child in ministering to another child like these in South Africa that we're going to go see in these orphanages that have never received a Christmas gift. They've never received a gift before. Isn't it amazing how blessed you are? Can you imagine never to have received a gift your whole life and you're 10, 12, 15 years old? It's hard for us to imagine, but that's the case of actually most of the children in the world. And so we want to do what we can to bless others. Church, today begins year 17 in my mind, so uh, I am so thankful to be serving you another year, another year. So our 17th Thanksgiving, our 17th Christmas, and it is going to be a wonderful, wonderful year. I am already excited. Y'all, this women's event that's coming up, I will tell you, I am really excited about that, ladies. You need to make that a priority to go. Uh, and you will know your spiritual gift. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. You need to invite your friends and relatives from other churches and other denominations. Listen, this isn't... When I think about growing the kingdom, this isn't just for you ladies. There are other denominations, whether they're Methodist or Presbyterians or Assemblies, and they may not know their spiritual gift. They need to know that for their church and how they serve God. So you start thinking about who you want to invite right now. And, and I, I'm not, now some of you who are able, we need some of you who are able to buy tickets for other people who are not able, okay? So you need to think through that also. If you're able to buy another ticket for another lady, uh, you can pay for somebody else's ticket and, and do that because we, we do not want one lady to not attend because she doesn't have the $40. We want all of our women to go. Well, y'all, let me close with the benediction. I love you much and uh, look so forward to what God is going to do this week, okay? Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only wise God our Savior be all glory and power, majesty and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Be blessed, church.